Paisan. It's time to get our swagger back. For 87 years, Luca Grill has been a Bloomington icon. It's tin ceilings, it's antique barback, the awning, it's corner spot on a busy downtown street. It's a throwback to a bygone Twin Cities era that even in 2023 still stands a test of time with every customer who rings her familiar bell when they walk through the door. While the world continues to change around us, Luca Grill remains a staple of the spirit of what Bloomington Normal is. It's pizza. It's people. It gets no better than the spot at 116 East Market Street. John Koch has co-owned Luca for six years and knows all the stories. From Luca's quirky history to JFK and the original owner's ties to Illinois State basketball. I stopped in on a Tuesday afternoon to experience the Luca magic for myself. Love this place. This is one of my very favorite restaurants here in town. As a matter of fact, it was my first restaurant that I ever had a dinner at uh, in Bloomington. Tell me about what makes Luca Grill so special. There's many things that make Luca Grill special. Aside from the most amazing pizza that you'll ever have anywhere in the world and some fantastic Italian food, it's the people. Uh, it's the people that I work with and the people I work for and the customers that come in and enjoy it. It's, uh, it's truly a labor of love. So John, tell me about John F. Kennedy. I've seen the photo up of him over out there on the wall, but what's the history here with John F. Kennedy? Came through the area back in 57, and he contacted John Baldini, who was one of the former owners, because yeah. uh, he was the McLean County Democratic Chairperson. They did some going around and meeting local dignitaries sure. and trying to drum up the support for his presidential run. And they happened to be uh, in a hotel that had a, a banquet room up above, and they were having a wedding reception. Huh. And according to legend, Kennedy got thirsty for a drink, and uh, they went up and kind of crashed the wedding reception. And uh, and that's when that picture was taken of uh, John Baldini and John Kennedy. So it wasn't actually in this bar, but it was yeah. in this town. And so uh, after Kennedy won the presidency, John Baldini sent the uh, picture to the White House. It was signed and sent back, and that's a blown up copy. Of Tell me about the connection between Luca and Illinois State University. Well, the, the lifeblood that runs between the Luca Grill and Illinois State University is uh, rich and deep and long. Uh, one of the former owners, John Baldini, he actually played for ISU basketball. When I first came back to work here, in 1995, uh, I went through and you know went through all the drawers just to see what kind of stuffs back there, and it's just rich in memorabilia. And I came across a scorecard that was filled out by John Baldini from one of his basketball games, and it's when they played UCLA, and there was a young man named Jackie Robinson playing for the other team. No way. Yes. Might I offer a suggestion? Uh, Kevin Stallings used to be a regular customer as well, and the last wow. time the uh, ISU basketball had a really good run in the tournament, he was here. Uh, before he went to the tournament. So you're telling me his last meal uh, before he went to St. Louis with the team was here at Luca Grill? It was. Well, you, you got yourself a new customer here uh, in, the, in the middle of March, because I'll, I'll be doing the same, and uh, that's great to know. That's a, what an awesome story that is. But those would have been the first two, and I'm assuming the Baldini family would have brought in the Illinois State, and that the fact that the Stanley Cup's been here four times. So as you see, that was the 50th, and that was the first uh, time I worked. I worked that week, which is kind of neat. Oh. And that's depicting Luca, Italy. And as you notice, all around that is a wall. They had their press parties here, upstairs in our dining room. So all the nationwide press got to be familiar with the restaurant, and that's how you end up in the Washington Post and the New York Times. Come on over. We're gonna make an olive baldini today, and uh, we'll see how much of that Italian heritage uh, you weld up inside you, and we're gonna see how you do. This oh, is, I love this, it. You're, this is like you're applying for the job. <laughs> what the olive baldini consists of is gonna be pepperoni, sausage, ham, green peppers, mushrooms, onions, and finally, the pièce de résistance is the pepperoncinis at the end there. Doing great, coach. Right around the edge like that, and then you kind of build it to the middle. Man, you're gonna be on the schedule next week, coach, at this rate. We're always looking for good help. <laughs> the method that I'm uh, inventing right now, the helicopter method. The crowning ingredient would be the pepperoncinis. Because what happens is they get hot, they're going to expand and, and send that, that warm juice out there and it's going to heat up that whole pizza. And this feels natural. Oh, that's looking really good. Let's oh, check yeah. that bottom. 
Oh yeah, that's what we want, Coach. I love that. Throw right over here. That's a pro there, ladies and gentlemen. Look at there. So just straight lines. All right. A little slower than your cut, John, but I've been practicing. I'm a rookie. Cheers. Hmm. Paisan. You have a future in this business. Thank you. This episode of Pian's Places is sponsored by Busey Bay.